Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. RetroArch just got a brand new update. If you use RetroArch on Steam, or if you've got a Steam Deck, you're really gonna like this one. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, RetroArch version 1.10.2 was just released. I'm gonna go over these changes at a pretty high level. If you wanna see them in much more detail, I'll leave a link to this article in the description below. Feel free to check it out. The first change here, and probably the biggest change, will really benefit Steam Deck users and just Steam users in general. You no longer have to install Cores as DLC. You can do it right through RetroArch. Now to show this off in action, I've got RetroArch up and running, and it is the new version here, 1.10.2. This is RetroArch on Steam. If I go right to the main menu and select Manage Cores, it lists the current cores that are available. I can just download and install the core directly from this menu. On a side note here, just a friendly heads up, if you're trying this new feature out and it seems like it's not working for you, maybe your cores are stuck at 0% installing, you are not alone. You can see it's happening to me as well. There are four cores here and they're all kind of stuck. I've tried rebooting RetroArch, I've tried rebooting Steam, I've even tried rebooting my computer. I'm not quite sure what the issue is, it appears there is an issue somewhere, and hopefully it gets resolved soon. The next new improvement here is specific to the Steam Deck. On the Steam Deck, the native on-screen keyboard will appear now instead of the RetroArch default on-screen keyboard. The next improvement here has to deal with audio for a number of different cores. Not only should performance be better, but you should be able to lower the audio latency buffers now while still getting perfect sound. And here is the list of the cores that have improved audio. We've got Cannonball, Flycast, Gambat, Nestopia, SNES 9X, a bunch of different versions of it, Swan Station, UAE, and Vice. And if you are curious as to what cores represent what system, I'll leave a very helpful list in the description below. Feel free to check it out. MiU users got three brand new cores, and so did Open Dingus users. There have also been some improvements to the overall UI. There's now a couple more themes. For XMB users, vertical fade adjustments have been made so it functions a little bit better. For RGUI users, 6x10 extended ASCII and Latin extended A and B fonts have been added. And lastly, for Ozone users, a thumbnail scaling option has been added. You can find this under Settings, User Interface, and Appearance. So to quickly go over these new UI elements, I'm back on RetroArch and you can see my cores are still stuck at installing 0%. I'll go into the Settings menu, I'll scroll down here to User Interface, and then I'll go to Appearance. From here, I'm gonna scroll down to menu color theme and I can see the brand new themes, dark gray and dark light, or gray dark and gray light rather. I really like the appearance of gray light here. Basic black is what it's normally set at, but I mean, gray light looks pretty good. And right under the menu color theme, we can see the thumbnail scale factor as well as thumbnails. So we can just change this up if we'd like. Moving on here and we've got some more improvements. They've added in a brand new sub menu for managing input remapping files. It says here, this updates correctly in real time and only shows relevant options. When removing a remap, existing files are rescanned and the one with the next highest priority, if found, will be loaded. In addition to that, the currently active remap file will be saved automatically when closing content. You no longer have to save it manually. Next up, this one is a pretty good quality of life improvement. RetroArch now prevents the global configuration of input libretro device type. This previously broke cores like Beetle PSX. If you're one of those people who uses RetroArch on the Wii U, there's a brand new option here to optimize it for the gamepad. It's under Settings, Video Output, and Optimize for Gamepad. In addition to everything we went over, there are a number of different changes here for a bunch of different systems. I'll leave a link to this in the description below. Feel free to check it out. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, haul stuff and no fluff. Let me know your thoughts on RetroArch version 1.10.2 in the comments below. Have you tried it out? Are you going to try it out? Was it everything you wanted or is it missing something? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate, save your state.